All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. It is Wednesday, March 27th. We have a large NBA slate to dive into in today's video like we always do when we go through each and every one of these games i'm gonna give you my lean on the spread i'll give you my lean on the total we'll talk about the games and any player props that i like within the game as well but as always keep an eye on the pinned comment for all of my final plays if you do want to fade me and do the opposite of my picks keep an eye on that pinned comment last night not a very fadeable night we've had a lot of these lately go five and two the one game that we really didn't have the pulse on was a game that we kind of got hoodwinked anyways. Um, you know, I was expecting Jimmy Butler to play, so we took the Heat plus three, uh, and he did not play, and I was like, oh, you know what? Throw away, right? Brandon Pazemski was the latest ad. We put him in like an hour or two before the game. Uh, those did not cash, but then we had the Thunder money line, the Thunder team total, and Josh Giddy over three and a half assists. We read that game correctly. Chris Middleton and Brooke Lopez, same game parlay cashed, as well as De'Aaron Fox just barely cashing there. So a five and two night. I'm not going to complain about that one bit. Like I said, even the losses we had, I can understand how we got there. They're bad reads. Um, in terms of the ride of the day, Oh boy, oh boy, the vibe's gotta change. So yesterday was my girlfriend's birthday. Shout out to you, Paris. She picks Trey Murphy over 16 and a half points, right? Trey Murphy at eight in the first six minutes of the game. We're cruising, we're at dinner, we're vibing. Oh, he finishes with 16 on the hook. And guys, I do this for you, okay? Because this is probably gonna come back to bite me. But I'm womp womp my girlfriend. No shoes, anything getting thrown at me here. Shout out to Paris for the attempt of the ride of the day. Um, but Trey Murphy just comes up just shy. He actually had a dunk opportunity and Chet Holmgren denied him, which would have put him over. So tough to see that. But if you guys don't know what the ride of the day is, all you got to use is hashtag ride of the day in the comments. Give me an absolute banger of a pick. I'm jumping on board with one person's pick, giving you a shout out just like Paris gets in this video. I'm giving you a shout out in the next video win or loss also shouting you out over on my twitter at fguyboston all my socials will be rotating right around here throughout the show make sure to go follow me there but yeah get those hashtag right of the days in the comments and r.i.p to paris and trey murphy there that is a tough one but shout out to paris she loved all the birthday wishes so i thank you guys very much you guys are absolutely awesome let's go ahead and jump into today's games hit that subscribe button hit that like button buckle up because we got a bunch of games to dive into today we got the horn it's taken on the Cavs here in game number one. Um, these two teams just played a couple nights back. Cleveland, 11-point favorites in that one. They win 111-92. to They're 10.5-point favorites here um, in Charlotte in this one here. And the total is 206.5. I just can't really get behind Charlotte to... to any degree they're two and eight in their last 10 games the two wins they have memphis brooklyn not even really worthy opponents um two and eight against the spread as well and they have plenty of double digit spreads in there that they have dropped so i'll lean towards cleveland in this one i don't love it because cleveland is still very injured that being said they do have evan mobley back but in terms of injuries jerome mitchell and wade still out here max Struess may be coming back shortly um but as of right now he's still questionable there so i'll lean towards cleveland it's nothing that i'm absolutely loving um i don't mind taking a peek at the over though uh though charlotte really has i don't even know if they scored 100 points in like their last seven games maybe one game in there so that's definitely going to be something that's tough for them but cleveland scoring 115 last game they kind of got out of their scoring rut and if they go and do that type of a thing again this total was 206 last game as well cleveland kind of carried the weight they go do that again we're looking at another over so that total is just a little too low to trust um one cleveland who can kind of you know explode offensively if they're clicking um but also charlotte's defense like i can't trust charlotte's defense to suppress a team not to go off for maybe say 120 right which makes 206 very very hard to not get to so i'll lean towards the over when we're looking at player props here nothing really jumps off the page to me i know you guys love when i say that but i'll look at vaseline michich here uh, uh, vaseline however you say his real name i can't even pronounce john um but michich here under two uh, under one and a half first quarter assists he's only done that in three of his last 10 games five straight games he stayed under the number and cleveland the fifth best team this season in preventing point guards from um getting assists here so hopefully you know he can go and get one assist in the first quarter hell he can have 10 assists in the game just don't get two in the first quarter but like i said this matchup this game we really kind of had to dig for any value in this spot 
Next up, we have Orlando taking on the Warriors. This should be a good game. Right now, Warriors um, are dogs, and they are on a back-to-back. Orlando laying the four and a half points total, sitting at 217 in this spot here. I think this one goes up and over, even though Orlando's um, defense is good. I think the Warriors on back-to-backs here um, are going to come out firing, and they've covered in nearly 65% of their games on back-to-backs um, from a cover rate as well as hitting the over. So, uh, yeah, I like the over, and maybe it's a, you know what? I think it's psycho alert worthy because people are low on the Warriors right now. I like the Warriors to cover this four and a half points as well. If this was two and a half, I probably would lean towards Orlando. So there is definitely a sort of, you know, a numbers game here in this spot. But this is a Warriors team on on road back to backs this season. Six and two straight up Um, coming off the win yesterday. You can make the argument that it's like, okay, well, no Jimmy Butler. That's a, uh, you know, a beaten and bruised heat team, blah, blah, blah. They win 113 to 92. Like they didn't just win. They really did like win so um i'm still a believer that the warriors make somewhat of a uh, decent push and start playing better basketball heading into the end of the season to the postseason and this could be another spot to kind of be like yeah you guys thought we were out like two back-to-back wins in florida here in miami then we beat orlando I could see it happening, but like I said, I'm not like over the moon confident in this because I just told you if this line was too lower, I'd probably lean towards Orlando, right? So I'm not trying to blow smoke up here, you know what? Um, But I'm going to lean towards Golden State here getting the points, and I like the over as well. I think Golden State uh, will be the team that kind of pushes the pace. I don't think that the Magic are going to struggle to score like uh, the Heat did. We have a Magic team that has been scoring, you know, 110 plus six straight games here. Um, not really afraid of the Warriors defense. They've been allowing plenty of points, so they should be able to get to the hoop um, and score a, a decent amount here, I would say, especially with Orlando liking to score at the rim and Golden State kind of struggling there as of late. Um, so that'll be a look uh, uh, for us as well, for Orlando kind of keep this pace up and score. So I like the over, like I said, as well as uh, taking a peek at the Warriors plus the points in the spot. When it comes to player props, I got a couple that I like. One, we have been cash but they bumped the line so kind of worried about it now but Jonathan Kaminga if you can get him at under five and a half rebounds I still like that spot that's gonna be a tough spot against Orlando a good rebounding team Um, in fact allowing the fewest rebounds to opponents not you know kind of regardless of positions uh, in the league this season which is good to see as well so that's under five and a half rebounds but it's juiced on most books a lot of books have him at four and a half now which is kind of what's been happening to us which means we're on the right track right we're hammering these plays hammering these plays and all of a sudden books are bumping them um Second play here, we're going back to Wendell Carter Jr. And I know a lot of people wrote him off and banned him after his one and a half assists for us. Didn't cash and prevented the sweep uh, a few nights back. But for plus money here, I got a few plays. I don't mind his over nine and a half rebounds plus assists tonight. I do think this could be a good spot for him. He's hit it in two of his last three games against the Warriors. The one game he didn't hit it in, he played 19 minutes. He should be playing more than that today. That's for plus money again uh, over on DraftKings and BetMGM. Um, nine and a half rebounds plus assists. I feel like he could get in rebounds alone. So I'd also consider a plus 105 play over on FanDuel at over seven and a half rebounds. I don't hate that either. So one of those could be a final play here. I do think that there could be some final plays within this game. Definitely like this game and this matchup a lot more than the game we just talked about prior to. All right, guys, before we get to the rest of the slate, I want to talk to you about Odds Jam. I have a link in the pinned comment. Get you seven days free. You can also use code GUYBOSS when signing up. Get 25% off if you continue with your subscription there. Go ahead and check it out. Right now, we're on the Sportsbook screen. I'll look for Wendell Carter Jr. This is how you can find the best odds out there. Um, Like I just said, so average odds at minus 107, right? Like I said, we're getting plus money over on FanDuel. That's how you can identify this. Literally links like damn near every sportsbook in the entire world. So make sure you guys are getting the correct odds and the best odds out there because you don't want to buy a car for 10 grand that if you just walk down the street you could get it for five grand right they also have tons of other tools like the arbitrage tool i have a specific video on the channel for this this is how you can bet both sides of a game or a play on two different sports books and make money regardless of the outcome and then my favorite tool the positive ev tool over here meaning you kind of kind of identify the missed price uh, plays out in the market. Really, really cool. And in fact, just for kind of proof in the pudding, um, we track everything through Odds Jam here. When I do these positive EVs and arbitrage, you can see here, 292 were up in March. Um, we made a video for February up 290 as well doing positive EV. Uh, January, we had a really good night. We were hammering arbitrage, or really good month, 781. Like this stuff actually works. The proof is literally right there in the pudding. Go ahead and check it out, guys.
Again, I have a link to Odds Jam in the pinned comment. Seven days free and use code GUYBOSTON to get 25% off. If you want to mathematically dismantle any of the sports books or DFS apps like Prize Picks Underdogs that you're on, go check out Odds Jam. Even if it's just for the seven days free, you'll see the value. I promise you that. Next up, pretty trash game here. We got the Wizards taking on Brooklyn. Uh, right now, Wizards getting three and a half points at home, which I'll say is not enough for me to consider them. So I am on the Brooklyn side of this. Uh, but what I will say is that this Wizards team has won three straight games. Now, I think that they're bad enough that it's like, yeah, let's wait for the next shoe to drop, right? Like time to lose. Um, but I could see why someone would be like, well, the Brooklyn Nets stink so why not ride the hotter team right so if you want to go with that and go down that road be my guest but i don't think we touch this game with a 10 foot pole today um but again i'll lean towards brooklyn if i had a gun to my head here in terms of a total um i think it slows down because i'm on the brooklyn side of things so this is probably like a a nets play which crazy enough like it could be a final play even though i said i'm not going to touch it like i've done crazy i don't think i will but the more and more i look into it maybe i do right i'm, I'm a psycho um but if you are on the this is kind of the point I'm trying to make. If you are on the Brooklyn side of things, I think you should consider the under. If you're on the Washington side of things, I think you should consider the over. Brooklyn will drag the pace down if they're controlling the game. Washington, if they're going to play their ball, they'll up the pace. They're the fastest pace team in the league over the last 10. So um, those are definitely two correlated plays there. I wouldn't go with like the Nets and the over if you're looking at that or vice versa. So um, it is what it is. We'll see if we end up rolling with anything again. Like, I just can't. This is just not nearly enough points you'd have to give me to bet on the wizard. So by default, I look at the nets. The sucky part is that the nets are the default. It's like, yikes. Um, but anyways, guys, I don't really have any player props in this spot either. Nothing that I uh, even really tried to dig, dig, dig too much into. Kyle Kuzma is back for Washington. Um, Cam Thomas is questionable for Brooklyn. So a couple injuries to keep uh, in mind. But yeah, nothing major in this spot. Next up, we have Atlanta taking on Portland. Atlanta, 11-point favorites in this one. I'll get out and say it. Really don't have any player props in this one either. Guys, there's so many games today. We don't need to force any, especially with some of these, like, bottom-tier teams and games, right? So, excuse me for, like, kind of taking some games being like, yeah, you know what? No player prop props in that spot. Hopefully, you can understand that. Uh, four games late yesterday, we came up with seven plays, went five and two. Like, we're not trying to take the easy road. It's just like we don't need to try and identify value from a player prop perspective in all of these games when there's so many games to pick from, if that makes sense. Um, but nonetheless, Atlanta, I'm going to lean towards them. Better team than, than Portland, and who knows? Maybe they feel like they're building off of that comeback win against my Boston Celtics, in which the Celtics just <coughs> choked that game away. That was absolutely brutal to watch. Portland has lost seven straight games. They've lost eight of their last nine. They've covered in more games than you'd think. They're 5-4-1 and one in their last 10, and they're covering these big numbers, but Houston just beat them by, I think it was 18 points. If Atlanta gets out and runs, I don't think Portland's offense can keep up with them, so kind of hoping that that's the case, and I'll lean towards the over as well because Atlanta, we know they can play with some pace. They haven't been as of late, but or I should say as of late they have, but over like a, I would say a 10-15 game stretch here, they haven't been playing with crazy pace, but last three games, 115, 132, 120, I don't really trust Portland's defense to be able to suppress them, right? So give me Atlanta and the over in this spot. Next, we have the Sixers taking on the Clippers. Sixers getting six points in this spot. Say that 10 times fast. Total sitting at 218. In terms of injuries, Kelly Oubre is a game-time decision. Um, no major injury updates for the Sixers on that side. Embiid, Melton, Covington still out. Um, in terms of the Clippers, no major injuries on their side either. So should have a relatively healthy game here. We'll start with the Clippers. This Clippers team has been kind of struggling. 3-7 and seven against the spread in their last 10. They're losing games they shouldn't lose, like when they played the Sixers um, in L.A. I think they were a lot, like, you know, 10-point favorites. They lose 121-107. to 107. For that reason, I am going to lean towards the Clippers. I think that they kind of have a revenge spot here. They're the more healthy team. Uh, they shouldn't lose two games in a row to the Sixers, who are kind of beaten and bruised. And the Sixers, you know, I talked about how the, the Clippers haven't been playing great basketball. The Sixers are kind of all over the place too, right? So I'll lean towards the, the Clippers in this spot. But do I love it? Not necessarily. I'm not saying I'm not touching it. 
because I do think, again, it's a good revenge spot for them, but it's kind of tough to get behind altogether. So uh, this probably stays at a lean unless anything throughout the day jumps out at us and we can lock it in. In terms of a total, uh, we're looking at 218. I think this one's a little bit more defensive um, than last game in terms of how the Sixers went out there and scored. Again, they scored 121, which is almost by far and away their highest scoring game in their last 10 here. I think the Clippers defense kind of snaps back to reality um, and they can play a little bit better defense because they haven't been Portland put up 115 or 115 plus against them um the Pacers put up a bunch the Sixers put up a bunch like this Clippers team needs to lock it in defensively uh because it's almost playoff time um in terms of player props here it's a weird one but it's kind of the only one that I found true value in um in terms of trend and you know defense versus matchup uh, Paul George over 0.5 blocks I don't mind his over one and a half steals plus blocks either um it's hard to get that. It's not really on many sports books as of right now. So that's why I'm leaning towards the blocks in this spot because I think his only steals line out there is like a one and a half, two for plus money. So we'll focus on the blocks in which he's done nine of his last 10 games. Um, he's done it in eight or seven straight games here. Last time they played, which was a couple nights back, he did have one block. And this is a Philly team that allows the fourth most blocks to their opponents on the season here and the sixth most to the small forward position, the most to the power forward position, um, no matter what you know position, I guess, you want to you know slate him in there and I would say small forward um so give me him over 0.5 blocks again it's a weird one I don't know if we've ever taken a true uh over in blocks before I know we've taken under in some big block lines but uh Paul George over 0.5 blocks is a player prop that I kind of uh discovered when looking at this game all right, two things. If you guys made it this far in the video, go ahead and comment 16 in the comments. Appreciate the hell out of everyone supporting as of late. Um, we had a great day yesterday. Me and Paris loved reading the comments and everything like that. Like, that was super, super fun to do. Um, but also, we have MLB hitting the channel pretty soon. Right now, the plan is I'll be doing just like last year. We had a really good MLB season last year, a daily MLB video just like this NBA video. So you'll be getting MLB and NBA, um, you know, as the NBA season progresses as well. Tassos, I believe, is going to throw some NBA or excuse me, MLB player props at you on a near daily basis as well. So tons of content hitting the channel pretty damn soon. We grind for you guys. You know what I mean? Like there's no hiding that. Uh, I want to work my ass off uh, and get sort of, you know, what that work uh, outcome is. So uh, I'm not afraid to work, put my head down and, and, and do the videos myself and everything like that, which is very clear, right? But that being said, we are looking for more people to come onto the channel. So make sure you DM me over on Twitter or on Instagram at EvPix if you guys think uh, you have some video ideas and whatnot uh so go ahead and do that but yeah just wanted to let you know that we have more and more content hitting the channel um and this this thing ain't stopping right we are flying this is the direction we're going we're going up all right so i uh, just want to kind of cut in here before we get to the rest of the slate and let you guys know that we have tons more coming on the channel pause i always seem to use the wrong verbiage but don't clip that Next, we have the Toronto Raptors getting 13 points at home as they host the New York Knicks. Total at 2-10 right now. This Toronto team has lost so many games in a row. They're not covering games either. They are beaten and bruised. Their injury report is as follows. No quickly, no Pirtle, uh, no Porter, uh, no Barnes, no Bear, no Boucher. Uh, they're just in a tough spot right now. Now, it's not like the Knicks are fully healthy. OG Ananobi, Julius Randle, and obviously still Mitchell Robinson out in this spot. But the Knicks have been kind of getting by with what they have. They've won seven of their last ten. Um, they've covered in six of their last ten. Six, three, and one against the spread. So I don't mind taking them in this spot. And even when they were kind of banged up and, uh, you know, they were definitely more healthy, but Toronto is definitely more healthy. The Knicks beat Toronto by 26 points. So I don't mind taking the Knicks in this spot. It's a big number, but I don't think that I'm afraid of it. Scared money don't make money. Um, from a total perspective, I look at this one and I say, yes, the Knicks defense is going to play really well. I almost can guarantee that. But 210 seems a little bit too low. I could see this finishing at like 212 to 215. So I'll lean towards the over, even though I do think the Knicks defense shows up. And then from a player prop perspective, this one may be a little crazy, um, but I'm going to lean towards Josh Hart here over 11 and a half points. He hasn't hit that in six straight games, okay? I understand it. Uh, but going against the Toronto team here, that just cannot stop a nosebleed at you could you could give them like blood stopper and blood carter a cauterizer or whatever it is a cauterizer uh and they wouldn't be able to stop a nosebleed at the rim right now so josh hart likes to get to the restricted area and score at the rim i think that he has a decent night tonight at doing that so yeah usually we're looking at josh hart points and rebounds or points and assists or pra all of those lines are super inflated now 
31 and a half is what we're sitting at. That's a little bit too high for me. So I'm going to lean towards his points in the spot. Again, that is um, 11 and a half. Um, I see 12 and a half on some sports books too. Still don't mind that. I definitely like the 11 and a half because he's going to get, um, you know, majority of his buckets are probably going to be twos. So getting to that 13 number means he needs to make a three or a foul shot or get, has to get to 14 along the way with twos. So if you can get 11 and a half, I do like Josh Hart tonight. Next up, we have Chicago taking on Indiana. This should be a pretty interesting one. This game went to overtime last time they played, which was, I believe, two weeks ago. Indiana ends up winning, or excuse me, Chicago ends up winning that one, 132 to 129. I think it's going to be a close game. Again, these two teams weirdly match up well. Um, you know, one's going to try and drag the pace down. One's going to try and up the pace. Um so I do think that this could be a good spot, a good game here. Uh, so I'm going to lean towards Chicago because they're getting three points. Do I think that you're crazy if you're on the Indiana side of things? Hell no. This Indiana team's been playing better basketball than Chicago. I'm more or less betting for a close game in which I'd like to have those three points in my pocket. The total is 234. I could see why it's that high. It makes total sense. I'm going to lean towards the over as well, which kind of what we talked about earlier, I'm doing the opposite of. Like, these aren't correlated. If I'm leaning towards Chicago, you'd think I'd like the under because Chicago will drag the pace down, but not necessarily. I think the pace is going to set the tone and that Chicago just stays within that three points throughout the game. So, yeah, give me Chicago plus the points, but I probably, uh, you know, don't, I'm not going to try and convince you to take Chicago in this spot because the Pacers could easily cover this. Chicago could also easily win this game outright. You know what I mean? So this is a tough one, a pretty sharp line. Um, and then slightly lean towards the over. My favorite play in this game is probably going to be an old faithful here. Aaron Neesmith, his line for rebounds has bumped back up to four and a half. And we're going to take the under there. Um, this should be a spot in which he has trouble getting rebounds. Now he has hit uh, this season. He's hit the under in two of three against uh, the Bulls. The two that he hit the under, he landed on four, so he won on the hook, right? The one that he hit the over, he landed at five, so he lost the uh, the under on the hook. So this is tough. I think he's going to be right around there, but again, I talked about it in recent videos. I was like, this is a value line. He's only getting uh, eight rebound chances per game over his last ten. His last five, that drops a seven and a half. I do think that he's going to end with three or four rebounds, making it a, making it a sweat but hopefully not five, okay? So the only concern here is that that total is super high. Is there going to be a lot more missed shots than normal and blah, blah, blah? But give me Aaron Neesmith under four and a half. We've kind of staked our uh, claim on this play uh, in the last two months or so, and we've cashed it tons of times. Hopefully we're not getting too greedy here. Hopefully we'll take it again. Lakers taking on Memphis here. Lakers with a nice little come from behind victory in overtime last night against the Bucks. That was a great game. No LeBron James either. He's listed as questionable in this spot. Anthony Davis also listed as questionable. And this spread is kind of interesting, right? Like this is a Memphis team that is is, is no good. Um, and they're only getting three and a half points against the Lakers team that clearly showed they can kind of battle with some of the better teams last night. So I don't know. I'm kind of skeeved out by this line. Like, w why is it so low? I'll lean towards Lakers, but that sure as hell smells like a trap here. I know they're on a back-to-back, -back, but LeBron didn't play. So if he didn't play last night, maybe he plays tonight. Uh, if AD and LeBron sit, then I don't touch this game. But give me the Lakers minus the three points. I'm probably missing something massive here, but I don't know. I don't know what it is. Um, in terms of the total 221 in this spot, I'm going to lean towards the under. I don't think the Lakers necessarily want to run and gun um, after last night here in an overtime game. Uh, I'm going to think that they kind of, you know, play good basketball, but slow things down and just kind of uh, play old man basketball in a sense. So give me the Lakers and the under. When it comes to player props in this spot, uh, Anthony Davis over two and a half assists. That seems like it could be a play. Uh, last time he played Memphis, he had four assists. The time before that they played the season, he had five assists assists now is he going to get tons of potential assist opportunities not necessarily but he is averaging five potential assists over his last 10 games uh you cut that in half two and a half that's like what that's what i like to see for the line right so it could be something that i consider there because i do think that if they slow this down it's going to be a lot of like all right pass to you you pass to you pass to you blah 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 so give me anthony davis over two and a half assists um also don't mind taking a peek at lebron james's assists line it's eight and a half that seems like it's a hell of a lot which it is but he cashed in eight of his last 10 games my concern is he literally has nine games against memphis dating back to last season in january he hasn't hit nine assists against them in all those games so he's oh for nine his last nine against them that's kind of tough but arrested lebron i don't think he's gonna think he needs to go off scoring against memphis could be a spot we consider i much rather i think anthony davis is over two and a half because it's an easier number and it kind of fits the game script a little more 
All right, another big spread here. We have the Timberwolves laying 14 and a half against Detroit. Um, I'm not going to bet Detroit. I'll tell you that right now. So I guess I reluctantly lay 14 and a half as Minnesota. Um, they might, uh, you know, cover this line because seeing as they've been beating teams like by a decent amount, they beat Cleveland by, I think it was like 15 or uh, by 13 or something like that. Like they could easily beat Detroit um, by this. They beat them only by, I think it was like eight points last time they played though, which is a little worrisome. The only time they met this year, but Detroit at this point, like they're probably just giving up, right? Like why are they going to continue to try? Um, so give me Minnesota, but that's too high of a line to confidently tell you that I'm going to lay it myself in terms of a total. I'll lean towards the over as well. Cause Minnesota is not going to need to bring defensive intensity against Detroit. They suck enough. Detroit's not going to have any defensive intensity here. So I think you can stumble into, you know, 216 in terms of a total in this spot. From a player prop perspective, it's plus money again. We've taken it two nights in a row and he sat these two games. I'm going to lean towards Cade Cunningham over six and a half assists. It's getting boring at this point because I continue to take it, but... Uh, it's plus 115 right now over on bet MGM. I do think there's value there. Uh, is it necessarily a spot that I'm think he's going to crush? No, but he's hit it in eight of his last 10 that he's played. His last game was, you know, two, he missed the last two games. Um, but in those two that he hasn't hit in his last 10 games, he landed at six. So he's hovering right around there. And I'm hoping that he has one of those 17, 18 potential assist games. And we're getting plus money at that six and a half. So, um, Kate Cunningham over six and a half assists. I know if I make it a final play, he'll sit again. It's literally happened two times in a row. All right, Thunder taking on the Rockets. Thunder came back and got that win for us last night. We were all over that. We had the Thunder money line, cashed. We had the Thunder over team total, cashed. We had uh, Josh Giddy over three and a half assists. Had to sweat it out. Actually, we had to sweat out pretty much all of those, but we cashed. So hopefully we got a good beat going on with the Thunder right now. Um, and I will say I'm going to lean Thunder again here. Six and a half points is a hell of a lot, and I don't love that number, but I think that too many people are going to read into the back-to-back in this spot. And Houston with rest advantages this year, only 46% cover rate. Um, OKC on back-to-back, 64% cover rate, and they're at home, so I do think they're going to be comfortable. So give me the uh, the thunder in this spot. I think a lot of people are going to be like, oh, well, Houston, you know, they're 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 playing good basketball and the Thunder are on a back-to-back. I totally get it. Houston's won nine straight games. They've covered in eight of their last nine, um, nine of the last 10, in fact, even the one game that they lost in their last 10, which was the 10th uh, they covered in. I just think a lot of people are going to be on Houston here. Um, and I've seen this line move all the way up to seven and a half already. So I'm um, kind of just fading the public in a sense. Um, OKC back-to-back, I get it. But uh, this is this is a Houston team that's really trying to get themselves into that play-in situation. And OKC losing that one seed, like I can see both teams caring about these wins. So give me OKC here. Um, it's a lot of points, so I get it if you're on Houston. I'm just really trusting a team that I think is way better. I think Houston stinks on the road. Um, a lot of this win streak has happened at home uh, in their last 10 in their last nine they've played five home games so more the majority of their games have been at home and their road games were portland washington san antonio sacramento so i'm calling bs right now on houston maybe i'm wrong maybe i talk to you tomorrow i got egg on my face in terms of the total 230 OKC on back-to-backs here have covered in seven or hit the over in 70% of their back-to-back games. Uh, I'm going to lean towards the over here as well. I think that they go and score a decent amount of points. Uh, I may also consider taking a peek like we did yesterday at their team total once we get some better lines out. Um, but I think you're going to need like 120 from them to make any value there. Little bit too much if you ask me. So keep an eye on the pinned comment. When it comes to player props, I'm going to lean towards Jabari Smith over eight and a half rebounds. Last three times he's played OKC, um, all have been this season and he's gone 18 17 13 uh they're not a very good rebounding team against centers he's getting that start at the center position uh and again like this is a guy that's kind of crushed them my one concern is that if you look at his last 10 games here he's only averaging 10 rebound chances so that's a little worrisome but against the thunder in his last um i guess you could say last seven games averaging 15.7 but rebound chances the last three against them 23 18 16 like go get those numbers for me man um because i do like that spot for him but again recent history doesn't look great but trend against this team i do like Uh, Utah hosting San Antonio in this spot here Utah laying three and a half points which seems like it's a little bit too low to me but am I thinking trap like I know Utah's not playing the best of basketball either but I do think they're a better team than San Antonio San Antonio is coming off a nice win against Phoenix can they really do that two games in a row 
I'm not buying. I'm going to take Utah here minus the points. You are going to want to keep an eye on the injury report. Laurie marketing game time decision, as is Victor Wembanyama and Keldon Johnson. So keep an eye on those guys there. Um, Jordan Clarkson ruled out for this game already. In terms of the total in this spot, we're going to 229. I think this gets into the 230s. Like, who's going to play defense in this game, right? Um, Nobody. You have two top 10 pace teams playing as well. So I got to give my lean towards the over. From a player prop perspective, shocker, shocker. I'm going to lean towards Victor Wembanyama over two and a half first quarter rebounds. Just like Cade Cunningham, we keep taking this and he keeps sitting out. Hopefully he gets the run today. Last time he played Utah, he had three rebounds in the first quarter in nine minutes of play. Um, he's been playing about seven minutes in the first quarter, which I wish it was a little bit higher. Uh, but Still, he's long enough and, and kind of mobile enough to be able to get that. John Collins is going to be his adversary uh, on the center side of things uh, as well. So, like, I think he can obviously, he's literally big enough and long enough to be able to go right over John Collins, right? So, give me him over two and a half first quarter rebounds. Other than that, uh, honestly, nothing that I'm loving in the spot. If Laurie Markinen plays, I really don't mind looking at his over PRA. Um, he did play last game, and he had 43, right? He went for 34 points. Uh, I think it was 34 points, two assists maybe, and a bunch of rebounds, uh, which is great. Uh, in terms of, again, uh, what we could see from him is no defense in this game. So I do like the spot. Uh, so another consideration there. But again, I want this Victor Wembanyama play because that's been something we've hammered so many times this season, right? Um, we used to get it at one and a half. Now it's two and a half. He's hitting eight of his last 10, but he keeps getting ruled out, man. All right, so right now, there's not that much we can do with this game. It's one of the better games, Nuggets taking on the Suns, but so many guys are on the injury board here. Bradley Beal, Yusuf Nurkic on the side of the Suns, and then Murray, Porter, Gordon, and Jokic all listed as questionable in the spot for Denver. So no player props we can necessarily look at here. Um, I do see a Bradley Beal for plus 120 over five and a half assists. I kind of like that value for that money. Um, but in terms of player props on the Nuggets side of things, we can't really see anything because we're still waiting on who's playing, who's not. So uh, keep an eye on the pin comment if we add anything. But for the spread and the total, I think we'll just act like all these guys are playing. I like Denver minus the points. As the season comes to a close, I do think Denver's going to want to um, – soak up as many of these wins as they can, especially when it comes to playing other playoff teams and, uh, I guess you could say, um, Western Conference teams, right? Uh, in terms of the total 226, I think Denver slows down this pace and starts to play... I don't want to say right away, like jumping the gun, playing playoff basketball, but I do think that they start to play some basketball that's more playoff-esque in terms of, all right, let's really lock in here. So give me Denver as well as the under in this spot. And again, keep an eye on the pin comp for any player props because uh, tons of injuries that we got to see first off before this. But guys... It's going to wrap for today's show. If you guys did enjoy, if you did, you know what to do. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button as well. Appreciate everyone uh, saying happy birthday to my girl from Paris yesterday in the comments. <laughs> she loved it. She was like, this is awesome. And I was like, yeah, it's, it's electric. So appreciate you guys. And I uh, will catch you guys in the next one. All right. Peace out.